can't really have an equipment system that doesn't equip anything. I think it's time we hooked up some equipment slots. Let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to do here is just fix up a couple of things that aren't working as well as they could. For example, when I collect my coffee and sword, they are showing up in the correct place. However, at the moment, if I click on the sword and I try to drop it, which is functionality that should be happening, it looks like nothing's happening. That said, if I close the inventory, you'll see that swords are appearing. And if you look in my hierarchy, you'll see that multiple swords are appearing. I can go down to my console and you'll notice that we are getting a null reference error. I'm just going to click on the first error message here and follow that to the code. Right here you'll see that our quantity text is the problem and that's because there is no quantity text in our inventory. This is just a holdover from when we copied this script from our item slot. We can actually get rid of that line altogether. We can scroll up and you'll find that in line 88 in my case, in the on left click though, we also have another reference to our quantity text. We're gonna take that out. We do still need quantity, just not the text itself. We can now go to the very top where we can just take out this reference to Text Mesh Pro quantity text all together. All right, the worst of the problem is now fixed. We can click on our sword and drop it. However, we're getting this ugly white square left behind. And when I click on other squares, you'll notice they are not properly deselecting. First off, to fix the ugly square, we just need to go into our equipment panel, open up the item panel, and let's just go into the prefab for one of these item slots. In here, if you scroll down, you'll notice that I just forgot to fill the empty sprite image. So right now it's doing the square, which is a default. And if I fill this instead with an actual empty sprite, we'll now get a nice empty sprite when we play the game. Since I did this to the prefab, it will automatically apply that change to all the other slots. The other error is in our inventory manager script under deselect all slots. And at the moment, whenever a slot is empty, it will call deselect slots, which will go through all of the item slots, turn off the shaders, and make sure that we know they're not selected. However, we're not currently doing this for our equipment slots. So I'm just gonna copy this for loop, paste it down below, and just change the item slots to equipment slots. And with that done, we can now click on our sword to drop it. It drops properly, the slot is deselected, and the sword appears on the map. All right, with that done, we're ready to dive into the meat of today's tutorial, which is going to be looking at how to make our items actually go on to our player's equipable slots. Let's dive in. All right, now at the start of this project, we had things set up so that your item scripts, when you collect the items, could pass information to your inventory manager, which then passed the information to your item slots. When you wanted to drop an item back on the map, you would pass the information back the other way to your item. Now we started off this tutorial series by adding another option, which allowed your inventory manager to send information to the equipment slots instead of your inventory. This time we're gonna add another layer. We're now gonna add your equipped slots. These are the slots that will show the actual gear that is equipped to your player at any given time. And so now our equipment slots will need the ability to, when clicked on, find out which equipped slot, whether a head slot, and a body slot, that sort of thing, the item needs to go to, and then equip it to that slot. That's where we're headed in this tutorial, and let's get started. So what we're hoping to accomplish today is that when we click an item over in our equipment inventory, that item will select the correct equipped slot over on our player equipment menu and then move itself into that slot while deleting itself from the equipment inventory. To get started with this, we're going to head down into our equipment slot script. All right, now the first step here is just to declare some variables up at the top. We're gonna need to be able to talk to each of those slots in our player equipment menu. So I'm just gonna head down below our item data and our item slot. I'm just gonna put a comment in here telling us that this will be a reference to our equipped slots. And right here, we're gonna make a serialized field reference. This is going to be a reference to equipped slots and um, we haven't created that yet, so it's not gonna like it for the moment. And the first one will be our head slot. And we could write a whole bunch of serialized private fields here, but we can save a lot of time by just adding a comma and then putting the name of all the different slots that you're going to have. All right, with that done, we've now created the ability, theoretically, for our equipment slots to talk to our equipped slots. Now what we wanna do is head on down to our on left click and we wanna do something with the logic of what happens when we actually click on one of these items. So first off, if we click on the item when it's already selected, 
so this top part here, we want to actually have the item become equipped, which means we're not going to need any of this logic here. For example, we don't need to check if it's usable, that was for our items, and we don't need to worry about the quantity or anything like that. Instead, what's gonna happen here is we're just gonna create a brand new method, which we will call equip gear. Now going to head down directly below this on left click, and we'll actually make this private void equip gear method. Essentially what we need to do here is just make a if statement for each of the possible slots that could be selected. For example, if the item type of the item we just clicked on is equal to item type dot head, we're then gonna wanna send this item to the head slot. And so we would type in head slot dot and now this next part's not gonna like us because we haven't created that yet, but you've gotta start somewhere. And so we're gonna call a new method called equip gear. And in that method, we're just gonna send over some information that it will need. So it will need the item sprite. It's also going to need the item name and finally the item description. You're then going to need to create one of these for each of the possible slots you have on your player. All right, this will send all of the information you need to over to our equipped slot. However, what we also are going to need to do here is after all of these if statements are done and the information is sent, we want to actually empty the slot that we are currently looking at. So that it'll look like the item was actually transferred over to that other slot. Now you should be seeing some error messages as Unity's not gonna like the fact that we're referring to a script that doesn't yet exist. So let's create it. You can head down into your assets in your scripts folder, go to create, C sharp script, and we'll just call this one equipped slot. Now, ultimately there's going to be a lot going on here, but we're gonna start with the bare bones for now. Let's get rid of our start and update methods. And we're gonna to need to declare some variables here up at the top. The first ones are going to be variables to do with the slot appearance. For this, we're going to need some serialized private fields. I'm just gonna copy that as I'm gonna be using it a lot. The first one will be to an image called, called slot image. Now, it's not going to like that at the moment because we're not yet telling it that we are using Unity's UI. So you can just head up to the top and go using UnityEngine.UI. While we're up here, we're also going to be accessing TextMesh Pro, so let's also put that in. Now, along with a slot image, we're also going to need a serialized private TMP text called slot name. Now that covers what our slot actually looks like. Now we're gonna need all of the different data that is going to be stored in this slot to do with the item. Once again, we'll start with a serialized private field. This one will just be the item type. We'll call it item type. And it's going to be equal to a new item type. Now essentially what this will just do is allow us in Unity to, in the inspector, click on each equipped slot and tell it what type of slot it is. So we can let the first one know it's a head slot, the second one know that it's a cloak slot, etc. The next couple of pieces of data are just going to be private as we don't need to see them in the inspector, we just need to hold on to the information so that, for example, when a sword is equipped, this slot keeps track of what type of sword and what it looks like so that if it gets sent back to the inventory again, it knows what data needs to go with the sword. So we'll have a private sprite called item sprite, a private string called item name, and another private string called item description. Finally, we're going to add one last category, which is just gonna be for other variables in general, as there's gonna be lots we just need for utility here. And at the moment, the only one we need is just a bool that's going to keep track of whether or not a slot is in use. That way we'll know whether or not you already have an item equipped when you go to equip something. Now if we take a look back in our equipment slot, you'll remember that we just created a call for something called equip gear, which sends a sprite, an item name, and an item description over here. Now we're just gonna create the method that is going to receive that information. So this one will have to be public since it's being talked to from another script and we'll call it equip gear. Now inside of our brackets here, we need to give some arguments for this method to actually be accepting. So it's gonna be getting a sprite called item sprite, a string called item name, and another string called item description. 
All right, I know this has been a lot, but we're getting close to the end of this one. Um, in here, we need to do two things. We're going to first of all update the image for this slot. And then after that, we're going to update all of our data that we're keeping track of. So first, let's start with the image. So we're going to tell it that this item sprite is going to be equal to the item sprite that was just sent in. We'll then grab our slot image, so the image that actually shows up in our equipped section. And we're going to access the sprite and tell it that we want it to be equal to this item sprite. This is what will actually make a sword appear on the main hand slot when we equip the sword. Finally, we want to get the slot name, which is our text mesh pro. And we're just going to turn it off so that when a sword is equipped, we see the sword instead of seeing a word that says main hand. With that done, we can go down to our update data. And we just want to make sure that we get all of the information now. So we want to get the item name that's being stored here will be equal to the item name sent in from our equipment slot. And we'll do the same thing for our item description. Finally, once we've equipped the gear, we just want this slot to know that the slot is in use. And so we'll set that bool to true. Now back in Unity, we still have a little bit of heavy lifting to do. I'm going to head into my Equipment menu, go to my Player Equipment panel, and open that up. We'll then open the actual Player Equipment panel, and let's start with our left one. Now we've got our four equipment slots here. The first one is for our head, and etc. down the left panel. I'm just going to Shift-click all four of these, then head over to my Inspector, where I'll just minimize these existing components, and we're going to add in the Equipped Slot script. Now this next part has to be done individually, so we can start with the first one, the head slot, open it up, and essentially what you just need to do is select things up so that the equipment image goes into the slot image and the item name goes into the slot name. You also need to tell this slot what type of slot it is, so in this case it's a head slot. And if you like, you could at this point change your names to match, which will probably save you trouble down the road. You can then go ahead and do that for all of the left panel and right panel. Now before we're ready to actually test this, we're just going to need to take one more visit to our item panel, which we can open up and you'll see all of our item slots here. Now at the moment, our item slots need to actually know where to find all of these different slots on our player. So what we can just do here is um, hook them up. So I'm gonna grab this item slot here and it's just going to need to know all of these things. So my main hand slot we can go into that slot. I'll then do the same thing for my left panel. And you'll notice that at the moment we have a little problem in that not all of that data is updating in all of the other slots. And so what we can just do, I'm just going to delete these extra prefabs and grab the one that is all hooked up and just command D. All right, at this point now I can click on any of the slots and you'll see that all of our data has been filled in. Now unfortunately this creates one other problem and that is just simply if you click on our inventory canvas, you look at our equipment slot and all looks good, it says there's 20 of them, but because we deleted and recreated them, our array is now more or less empty. And so I'm just going to zero this out in order to get rid of all those slots. I'll lock our inspector and just one more time I'm going to shift click all of the item slots from our equipment and drag them in there. Now collect our sword, click it once in order to select it, and click it again in order to equip it onto our player. Now there's still lots to do, of course. At the moment, we can't unequip it. It doesn't change our stats or the way our player appears. We'll get there though. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Until next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.